I'm in northern Ohio on a farm. I've got some old used tires, some junk tools, and a few parts. Because I bought this 1989 Chevrolet Camaro, and up until just recently, it sat in this barn for the better part of a decade. Of course, it doesn't run or drive. So I'm gonna do the right thing, try to fire this up and drive it 600 miles back home. Yep, seems fine. No, definitely hitchhiking. The previous owner sold the car circa 2005, somewhere in there, and shortly after, bought her back. And this is exactly where the car sat. Josh is active military and just didn't have time for the thing. Thank you for your service, by the way. And see, this building is actually scheduled to be torn down. So they did the right thing and, well, they drug it out with the tractor and pushed her out back. Underneath me, I'm standing on hand-cut beams. And when I say hand-cut, I mean hatchet. Old school. The foundation's all rock laid. Beautiful building. Built by when men were men. You know what I mean? Kind of sad it's coming down, but I get it. You know, the integrity of the building. Well, it's, it's getting down there a little bit. But I'm excited to see this car come back around, get it back on the highway. You could definitely tell Josh enjoyed this car and he put some money into the thing, is what he was saying. So let's go back down to the car, walk around this thing, drink it up, see what we're working with. I think what we'll do here, fellers and fellettes, is we'll snag our peepers into the exterior of the rig here first, and then we'll go back to the hatch or the boot. Obviously, we've already got fats and skinnies. Like in the look, you can definitely tell this was a 90s, early 2000s build. And here's what interested me in this car so much. You know, it's a third gen Camaro. Okay, well that's number three. They're hotter than lion dancing in July right now. And I ain't kidding you. But here is what is so ironic about this car. I had this exact car when I was in high school. Down to the paint, white, black stripes, same interior, engine, transmission, you name it. The only difference was I put Z28 hood on mine and this is a RS flavor. The whole rig is an RS flavor, by the way. But you know, it's like nostalgia, whatever they put in them, fancy leather bound books. I think that's the word. Brings it back, is what I'm saying. So I just had to have the thing. So let's gander around this thing really quick and then we'll jump inside, see if we got some ignition sticks, get the rear open. Hopefully, I don't, I don't know anything about it. You know, at first glance, it don't look that bad, you know, from back here. But if a guy digs into her, boy, it's been to Walmart a lot. Look at these dings just scattered in here over there but that's okay I'm fine with that it's been painted obviously you can see the overspray on the weather stripping there and just well basically everywhere stripes are a nice touch got the fogged rears I didn't have those they were so darned expensive back in the day you know what I mean we got the tee of the tops with some house silicone you know keeping them real or whatever the kids say. So, no leaks. We know them don't leak at all. Missing a door locker upper, no big deal. Still has the RS badge on this side. That's nice, but listen, I don't see any rust. Mainly because these plastic pieces hide all of them. And that's fine. We're not even gonna take them off, but look here, we're good. Oh boy, this thing just she was beat on 
before she was put away. Look at those cords hanging out of the tire. Look at all the rubber. You know, one last joy ride before you stick her away. That's all right. Ooh, look at that. The axle was rebuilt on. Blue. I don't know why, but that's just the color that it is, I guess. Still got the lock in the back. That's nice. We got dual pipes. Oh, yeah, we got dual pipe elators. I'm excited to see what this thing sounds like. We're definitely not going to scooch underneath because, while well, it's laying on the ground currently. We got some Avenger S's, G1T's, Mass. I don't know. And also, as the kids say, been a minute since I've seen. I don't know if I've seen these wheels on a third gen, if I'm being honest. I don't even know what them are. But I like them. They fit, you know. But back to the rust situation. I think we're good. You know what I mean? I think we're pretty good. Been sitting here a while. I actually bought this about a year ago. And they've been so kind to keep it in the barn until recently. This will be interesting getting this front end jacked up because it's, you know, on the ground. So that's, that's neat. Mismatched lugs, that's fine. It looks like a, probably a six inch wide wheel up here and probably an eight back there on a 255. I should have looked. Now it's so far away. I don't know if I'm gonna get back there again. I do know I had to run coil spacers on mine. I had 295 5015s and the tire would rub the fender well every time I hit a bump. So those are definitely smaller. Maybe we'll make it back around, we'll see. This looks like probably base-ish, you know, military information. You can see back here, United States Marines. That's gonna stay on there, just like that. I guarantee it. Front's pretty good. Normally the body FX, letter F, letter X, not spelled out, is smashed out of it. You know, but this one looks pretty decent. Not too bad. This tells me right there that it was snagged a couple times. See how the paint blew it out of it? That's from the front snagging. But it's way, way better than most. Older rigs, anyway. Looking pretty good. Well, let's see what this tire is. Yeah, 255, 6015. Just a baby, you know. But it gives it the right stance anyway. Boy, I got really lucky on the rust. I legitimately only saw, I think, one picture and one video of just like an engine bay overview. So I had no idea what I was getting into coming into this. But that's just, that's what we do. Well, let's uh, get this open. What kind of creature is this with the cloth? I don't know. Let's get back here and see what we got going on. Well, earlier when I said ignition stick, singular, I went ahead and just gave myself a jinx. There is no, you know, round GM key for the doors or the hatch back here, which, whatever, 98.376253 repeating percent of the time. The doors have been rekeyed, and that key doesn't even work back here anyway. Oh, <laughs> wait. Oh, there's those GM gas shocks. We don't need a key. Oh, two by four, third gen life, right here. Been here a thousand times. Right on that nub, there we go. Hey, there's no engine parts. I'll be dipped. First thing I happen to notice is the VIN up here on the lid actually matches the VIN on the car. So we've got original edge on the hatch, which sounds weird, but that's pretty odd. This glass would break out in a lot of time to just redo the whole rear enders. Anywho, what do we got? Ice scraper. Front pocket fine, except it won't fit there. Seat belt itch. Sure. Wires. Yep. 
check. Oh, compartmentalization rules. Here is the old parts identification list. Should dig through some of those in a minute, see if there's any that pop out to me, but looks like a very standard RS with a five speed. If I'm being completely honest, would have had a 305 course. But I mean, all the plastics here, this could probably clean up a little bit. Yeah, look at that, no rust down there, nothing. Ain't been caved in before. See that support there would be just flailing on the inside and they just fix the outside. Good there, not bad. Well, we're gonna let the rear air out because I'm telling you, I started, it was, I was getting it. It wasn't good. Let's go ahead and jump in, see what we got. It's about 138 degrees or 97 waffles for you Canadians. Oh, wow. No, nope. Fellers, fellats, this one is bad. Normally I give you two smells, but that ain't gonna do it. This one is really up there. I'm gonna go with Active Bat Cave mixed with a Motel 6 hot tub and a wet bag of oats full of mice. I mean, no, nope. These windows are staying down. There is mice droppings. Everywhere. And it is thick. Is that a house switch? It's currently on. That's fine, I guess. I do have an ignition key, like I said earlier. And that's everything is broken. It's it's busted or it's it's gone. It's missing. Great. You know, steering column works. Tilt. <laughs> Don't be tipped. Worth the trip. Well, here's what we got. And it's uh, a whole lot of this. You know, just, it's everywhere. But where are they living? They ain't eating up the seats. But I'm telling you, the smell is just, it's one of the worst ones I've been in in a while. And I'm not exaggerating that. It just is what it is. Is this a sheath to a sword? Okay. Yep. Sure is. I like that. That's custom. Normally a big arm piece here, but this is way better. I like that. Window crank works, as you saw. What about the mirror? Oh, yeah. Brand new. Here's that switch. No idea what it does. You know, I guess we'll investigate. On that, I guess. We do got the 115s MPH is not the 85s. And it ain't the, you know, the KM forward slash H's either. We got the factory tack. Puppy bangs out at five, you know what I mean? I got a surprise for you under the hood, so just hang around now. Sit tight, okay? We're getting there. Yep. Yep, that'll work. Nope. Do we got crews? With a manual? What? Come on now. Well, that won't work. 100% guaranteed. Ooh, AutoZone pedals. Those gotta come off immediately. Oh, that seems, that seems good. Not even gonna touch that one. We'll wait until we're ready to leave. Wiring's been gently, you know, it's been gone through. I'm gonna guess that it no longer has a Q-Jet based on the choke lever. At least I think that's what it is. The speedo meter says 106,000. Nope. 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 Probably, probably 206, if not 306. Rear seat's not that bad. We got some mice chewage there. Leave it alone, mices. 
I don't know if they speak English. Up top is pretty good. Headliner's mint. No issues there. Ain't hanging down. Stuff like that. But hey, listen though. <laughs> listen. Remember when we were talking about the silicone? I think it worked. I mean, I know it's been raining. Look at the crops. See what I'm saying? And we ain't got no water floating in here. Oh, I take that back. That is that is significantly damp and uh, has absolutely been holding water. Okay, so maybe they leak. We'll ignore that for now. What else do we got? Oh, do we got blue tees? No, the compact disc with the Wama Ampa Ampa 3 and the ah, 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 but you could plug your headphones into them. So that's good. I can't, I can't, I gotta go open that other window. Why do they do this? Did someone just completely remove the belts and they had to put different color belts in? I don't understand that. This is also, ouch, just cut my hand open on rust. That's fine. You don't need all them bolts. But I'm glad we got her back because I don't fit in these either. And this has got to be like that for me to get in. But I mean, the interior, you know, end of day. What I'm saying is the interior is in really good shape. I mean, run a vacuum through here, get one of them carpet. You know, it's got the bristles and it's scrub the seats a little bit. Some new uh, floor mats. Brand new. I mean, going to town guaranteed not even going to try to take these out maybe we should maybe we should try it <laughs> air conditioning hello if we get this running we definitely got to cruise with those off that's the only way right well let's get under the hood already it's already popped it's already open you know you can tell by my face how surprised i am That it's a Manuel bolt action, Delectomatic. Grind them till you find them. Straight shift, five sped. That's really awesome, actually. Really awesome. Sought after, if I'm being honest. I had just assumed it was a 700R with a four behind it. I don't think I even asked. But what's under this power barn is what matters. That's a huge advantage. We don't have to worry about burnt clutches and all that stuff. We just got the one clutch. That kind of guy ease on it, you know. Fairly confident that's going to work as long as the clutch pedal and the fork does the forky disc uh, clutch thing. Now under this hood here, we had the 305 H of an O. But the guy that sold it to the guy that sold it to his friend's uncle's cousin's nephew, that sold it to the other guy that sold it to the guy that I bought from, that sold it and then bought it back from the other guy, so that he was the previous owner that I bought it from, told me that this is a 350 and she's hopped up. So let's find out. That would be more gooder than a 305. Are these shocks gonna work? Normally these collapse too. Oh, they're hanging in there. Things are bending, but it's there. Okay, we got chrome, we're getting home. No, that, that's not real life at all. Definitely has the 99 accessorized. Still, I see the serpentine snake belts on here. 47,000 spider webs. We got the HEIs, cast iron heads. We got headers. We got headers in here. Digital fans. Can't see the fuel make it happen here. Scanning, scanning, mice damage, scanning. Doesn't look that bad. I mean, normally, when you have mice damage, it's obvious. They're just doing this, the wires, you know, and then you're doing this, trying to figure it out. So, I don't know. Are we good or off? We might be. I'll bring you in. Get over here and look at this. Get down in here. Take a look. Well, I've scooped about 347,000 pounds of spiderwebs out of here. Huntsman's. Here's what we got. 
I mean, some of the plastic, you know, accoutrements have been eaten on, but the wires, lightning hoses, they all look pretty decent. Had a battery in 712, which I think is when it was parked up. So this is going to be better than Elvis. That's fine. Look at this. That's been refurbished. We got some sort of hoppage upage in there. That's an addle broken intake, I can tell you that. Cheapy Evil Bay valve covers. We got headers. I don't know. Could it be hopped up? That'd be a surprise. Based on that rear tire, though, she's been road hard and put up wet. You know what I mean? The cruise control's down. Shoot! Come on! Oh, wow. Well, Uh-oh. We got hydro-draulic clutches, which means the pedal is just going to bounce off the floor, and we're never going to be able to bleed that. So that's fine. Custom PS bracket mount off the header there. Well, let me just fix this really quick. See, the temp gauge wasn't working. Now it does. $95, you know, service call, whatever you want to call it. I'll invoice you. I mean, it's all here, though. Hand-painted Sumite racing equipments with the fancy $20 bow tie thing. I'll be dipped. Wait a second. You normally don't need these unless you got a cam. It's a check valve for your vacuum. Huh. Think it's got a cam? I don't know. I just hope to think that it just turns over and does the running thing. That would be neat. Man, this is a blast from the past. Just seeing all this exactly like my setup. Just wild. Why they sprayed this in a hurry. A little more history on my white Camaro. It was the second car I ever painted, just as a little, a little guy. First one was a early 80s Ford Bronco. My dad spilt a gallon of paint on the shop floor and we scooped it up with a hay shovel and tried to filter it through some used shop rags. Worked great. Too much catalyst, was a little bit pink. It still worked. Anywho, the Camara we painted in Bud's barn. Remember Bud? <laughs> what a character. Anyway, we took the car over to his barn, rolled it in there. Horse was still in there. True story. He was rooting around, kicking up hay. One light bulb, swinging. We painted that thing about 1030 at night. My dad was about 37 old Milwaukee's in. I had like nine Red Bulls. You know, so we just, we weren't in the frame of mind. But I tell you what, re-rolled that thing out in the morning. You can set a marble on the hood and it would almost roll. I mean, it would kind of go a few inches. But I took care of that a couple weeks later with some cutting and buffing. And it looked pretty sharp. I ain't kidding you. Tractor paint. We used tractor paint, single stage. I think I had like 60 bucks in the paint job. Hardest part was getting the original stickers off the thing. But anyway, we got a pretty solid base here. We got a small block Chevy. I'm gonna assume it's a 305 until I can prove otherwise. You know what I mean? Maybe I can get my neck in there and read on the numbers on the back of the block. Nope, can't fit. Probably wait till we get home. Five speed, that's great. No idea what's under it. Maybe it has a drive shaft and a rear end. That's good. We got an ignition key. So we're off to a good start. So let's just jump in go through the basics. We're gonna to have to make sure we got spark, compression, fuel, see if we can get this thing just to make a little bit of noise, and then we'll just start working through this thing. My biggest concern when rigs sit this long is the fuel capacitize. You know, what happened to the fuel, what's, in the, what's inside of the fuel tank? You know, is it plugged? Is the pickup screen plugged? You know, are the lines rotten? How are we gonna drive 600 miles on a five gallon gas truck? You don't. That's how, try it, doesn't work. And then, of course, head gaskets. That's a big one. You know, are the head gaskets shot? Are they gonna come back around, cook in, things like that? Plus, we don't even know. Could have a rod knock, blown piston rings. I don't know. Flat cam, smoke lifter, bent push rods, 
No oil pressure. I don't know yet. Well, let's start analyzing a little bit more here. Dig in, see what we got. Now, I'm pretty confident in 89 they had digital pumps, but we got a mechanicals, which is nice. You don't have to worry about the electronics going out on the feller down the highway, but what happened to the tank? You know, what are they, what's happening? What are they doing back there? I'm too lazy to look, but I guess we'll find out if it works. What do we got here? 9605S. It's a Carter. 600. Manuel choke. Yep, here we are. I see it. I'm looking at it now. Lots of soot. Tons of soot around it. So I can already tell you the timing's off and she's running rich. But we can fix that with the ear meter and the sniff later 200. Guarantee it. We don't need no fancy tools for that. 38,000 zip ties. Got auto lights in here. That's wrong. Need to fix that. Does this even work still? Hey, it ain't locked up. That's good. Accelerator pump's gonna be shot. That's fine. The other concern here, kind of going through this, is electrotronic digital fans. Wonder if that's what the house switch is. You know, mine was wired into my fan switch. True story. No heat, no AC. Of course, all that was laid on because of the HPs, you know. But you run that fan switch to high. That was the cooling fan, so a guy had to keep his eyes on the devil. You want to steal it? Fine. You're going to overheat it in eight feet. You know what I mean? Anti-theft. Circa 1997. What else we got here? Vacuum Advance is still hooked up. Looks like a very stock GM HEI. Stock fuel pump. I don't really think this is hopped up, if I'm going to be honest. Not seeing anything special on the head castings here on the front or anything like that. And these are drilled for accessorize. Probably not so special. You know, where a guy can probably start, can we just pull the sparkulators out? Glance our peepers through it. See if we can figure out how it was running when it was parked. Go ahead and replace them with an AC Delco right now. I also see a Fram filter down there. That's eventually going to have to go. But, you know, let's get them sparkulators out. See if this engine turns over. Probably start with spark first. Then we'll move into fuel here. See what we got going on with this old guy. Everything is so rusted. Let's get humid around here, huh? Maybe. Doubtful. No, it probably could be. Well, the uh, number one lightning hose is plugged in second over from the digital electrotronic plugger in or box unit, which is not standard. Normally it's the first one over, so it's turned in such a manner that a guy could glance at it if you're a Chevy feller and go, nope, that ain't right. Someone's been playing in here. However, this supposedly ran when it was parked, you know, the deal there. And I don't have a timing light, so we'll probably put them back on in the same position. And I already know that I have to adjust the timing a little bit just based on what I'm seeing with the fuel make it happen. So we don't want to make that big of a jump. If I get a little froggy, you know, after we get it running, we'll just take all the lightning hoses, jump them over a boot, reset the dizzy, go through the process again, but I've only got two days. Well, two and one thirty second days to get home. So I don't really have a lot of time here. This is more of a just, can this thing go down the highway at 46 miles an hour? And can we get home without blowing a rear end, clutch, wheel bearing, engine situation is what I'm saying. Got in really late today because I had a delayed flight and issues with my car rental and everything else. Wow, that was about ready to fall out. Way too loose. So we got a super late start to the day today, which I was not planning on. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. Got a soot ring all the way around to the strap. 
but the timing's off. Just looking at the strap there. We'll fix that though once we get her fired up. Basically, I'm just looking for mechanical damage here. You know, overly rich. Uh, you know, we, if it's super bad, we could pick up a jet kit or something for this. Carter, also in the indications that it was burning antifreeze or water or super oil soaked. Just a health check. You know, this is kind of the whole, hey, turn your head and cough. <laughs> yeah, not bad. A little bit of oil on that one. Okay, now I remember the old third gen. Number three, good luck. I think, if I remember right, you gotta have a sparkulator wrench tool, ground down, or use an open end. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's all coming back. Well, the guys got all the sparkulators out here, and they're all pretty much exactly the same, which is great engine health-wise, except for number seven. Hasn't quite stepped into the party yet. A little bit heavy on the oil deposits, so it's probably the one cylinder that's down, but the other bank, I mean, it's all the same. They're just chocolate milky. So now we got all of those out. This should spin over really easy. So why don't we throw some ranch dressing down there on the crankulator. See if this thing will rotate over and make sure that we get a full 360 degrees rotation out of this thing. Make sure the valve train and all that stuff isn't stuck or we have any sticky points in here at all. And then we're off to a good start before we put a fresh battery in her and start shooting the starter through the flywheel and getting that bound up, you know? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you fellas. I've been wrestling on this crank bolt for quite a few minutes. All I've managed to do is tighten it significantly and start stripping it. That's um, actually really concerning. A digital camera with me either. I'm a thousand percent sure it's a neutral. <sighs> Had an air cleaner. I don't think it took any moisture in. I really did not come prepared for this to be stuck. I don't have any pry bars or nothing. I got bare minimals. Bears. Must just have a ring ridge in it. But I mean. Well, that's brand new. That ain't ever been used. It's just really no signs of moisture. I don't know. I guess I'll keep trying. Maybe I'll. Tr I can't really go the other way. I'll just back the bolt out. I also don't want to snap the bolt off, because then we're in a position we got to jack this thing up and try to use the flywheel to turn it over. That ain't no fun. Been there about 126 times. Well, I've been working on this for about a half hour now, trying to get this to turn over. You can tell because of my knuckles and the way that they are. Moving up here to the alt nut because I've pretty well rounded off that crank bolt. And I'm just hoping I can get a better bite. No, alt spinning, but it ain't, the belt ain't gonna grab. It's that stuck. Oh no. How much are U-Haul trailers? Well, guys, starting to lose light. I got maybe 25 minutes left. Really ain't much I could do right now. I gotta soak this thing down, really. Really good opportunity for me tonight just to fill the cylinder rays up with blaster max. This is float them off all of them to the top that's all i got really normally some brute with some mystery oil no one it's a mystery no one knows it's in it atf sea foam berryman b12 diesel fuel kerosene gasoline wd-40 i pit rust penetrant okay 
that's what we need to put in there. I'm gonna try to get this in here, spray her down good, let her soak overnight, and just hope and pray that tomorrow we can get this thing cracked loose. I really don't like throwing a hot battery and just hitting the starter, and this is why. You blow two, three teeth out of the thing, well, you just made your whole day a lot worse. Now, I know there's a tractor around here. This guy farms 10,000 acres. So if we have to, maybe we hook a chain on this, throw her in a gear and drag on her. The only risk there is you blow your clutch out. You know what I mean? There we go. Drink up, little buddy. Oh, number one must be down in the hole. There we go. Work our way around. This makes me feel good knowing that this is my ride home, you know. It's fine. Everything's fine. Oh. What is going on? The Maxis's ain't really maxing. Tell you that much. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take that, hook it to this, and then just, you know, go drag on it. Pop the clutch a few times, maybe, just maybe. One of two things is gonna happen. Smoke the clutch or nothing. 3% chance the engine actually breaks free. Let's just hope that the clutch is strong enough to hang on and knock this thing loose. Sometimes it just takes a jar. You know, you got a jar on it and it'll pop free. Fingers crossed. Nice little unit. Massive Ferguson. Here we go. Well, four wheels are turning. That's good. And I've got the clutch in right now in first gear. I think, yep. Yeah. So we might have clutchage. That's huge. I'm gonna go down the old highway here and just drag on them a little bit. If you grew up on a ranch or a farm, this is just how you did it. So there's really no other way. Okay. Here we go. Clutch drop. Locked up. Locked up. Grab second. Still skidding the tires. Skidding the tires. First gear. Hey, it just popped. Yes, it literally just popped free. Uh, second gear did it. I think we're good to go. Oh, what a relief. Sometimes it just takes brute force fellets and fellers, you know. Oh, it's going through my head. Remember that Texas trip at the Buick? I'm like, well, now I got to go buy a pick -em up truck. Shoot, another square body, you know. Happened to see an OBS downtown look pretty straight. Get a U-Haul trailer, but I'd much rather try to get this thing running. He's going to get such a kick out of seeing this thing go down the highway again. That's really what's given me the gusto to not give up on this thing. I was fixing to pull the heads, even. Sometimes a valve train just gets stuck. You can pull out the valve covers and just bang on the valves. Make sure them are valving. You know what I mean? The spring laying on the springs. And then, if you really want to get in there, you take the heads off. But I wonder if he could keep going. You want to keep going to the tavern? Straight to the tavern. I think we're going to the tavern, actually. I just, <laughs> you know, lineman's good. Has he got eight rain bins? How many acres has he got around here? Well, I'll beat that. The old Futura Gillis. Held air overnight. Still junk, so. Good morning, 7 11, 9 early, billion o'clock. Beautiful out here. Start of day two. Late last night, we drugged the old Camara around with the massive Ferguson. 
And thankfully, we were able to get that engine broke free and rotating a little bit. Very good news. That being said, I am way behind schedule now. I have to have this car running, driving, and on the highway tonight if I'm going to make it home in time for my obligations. Puts us in a position we're going to have to cannonball all 600 miles tomorrow if we stay on our new schedule. That seems fine. Now, 600 miles is quite a drive even in a modern car with reliability. That's okay. Well, a guy's gonna have to start grabbing gears here if we're gonna make this happen. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and juice down the engine here and then turn my attention to the tires and wheels. Here's why. Normally when an engine's stuck like that, and it's happened to me several hundreds of times, it's just a ring ridge, and you could fight through that with a wrench. You know, you guys have seen me do it a lot. But this was way more than that. I mean, it was stuck, stuck. I don't have my scope to get down there and digitalize into the cylinders. We're just gonna have to assume it's not good. You know, it was pretty, it was stucked up, is what I'm saying. So I think what I'm gonna do is juice this down with some Marvel mystery oil. I don't know what's in it. It's a mystery. And while that's soaking, we can bust the tires off throw those in the rental truck, go back to town, swap on the slightly more girder, also 30 year old used tires, bring those back, put those on. Because end of day, regardless, whether I get this running or not, I gotta have decent tires to flat tow it or put it on a trailer or sell it on Craigslist after I wash and polish one side and post that as the only picture. You know what I mean? So it's gotta be done either and or, and I want to make sure I do that before the tire store gets closed tonight because we're going to probably get carried away here pretty soon. Got the sparkulators out already. Let's just juice this up. It's going to look like a scene from Murder, She Wrote around here. Did you hear that? Yeah, someone just fired up an International 1086 somewhere back here. Guys got to be committed if you're going to go this route here, fellers and fellettes. It's a mess. Bring three brooms. You know what I mean? I did juice this down again last night, but got to thinking while I was sleeping for 13 minutes. We're just going to go this route. This is also going to help us because we haven't drained the oil yet. If we really soak this down, we could pull that dip of stick over there and see if any of this has washed past the rings. It'll kind of give us an indication if there's a stuck or worn or whatever else as well. If we're going to find a bunch of fresh Marvel mystery oil. I don't know what's in it. It's a mystery. In the crankcase. See what I'm saying? Well, number one is definitely down in the hole. I think that's plenty of juice there. Yeah, there she comes. Moving over to the next one here. Also, I get to roll around in this all day now. That's That was a great plan. When I change the oil, my back's going to be full of mystery. <laughs> Whatever is what it is. Just got my new jack and jack stands unboxed. Got about... 158 of this set now. That's fine. Need to have a rummage sale sometime. Kept reaching for my Leatherman. Can't fly with them, fellers. I ain't kidding you. Speaking of quick draw, did you know that Wyatt Earp never even actually wore a gun belt? Like they say in the movies? Nope. He had a silk lined pocket inside of his jacket. True story. Even at the shootout, OK Corral, which actually was just a vacant lot back then, he drew from his jacket. But sometime in the 50s, production company renamed it the OK Corral shootout, probably because the vacant lot shootout. You know, that doesn't sound very cool. Anyway, what are we, why are we talking about this? I got the jack down here. Let's get this front end up. Well, 38 days later, 
Finally got her up on jack stands, even though she's got headers, still two in the one. Then they must split it out down there somewhere to get back to the dual pipe laters. Floor shot. That's weird. But I think that's the only rust in the rig. Just can't believe it. I got to. I'm looking right at it. Anyway, I'm going to use, I only got two jack stands, trying to save some money. Back there, I'll just leave the jack under the diff. You know, we'll jack like that, get the rears off. It'll be super sketchy, but this feller's kids are in school. No one's going to be out here playing around it, so it should be all right. Looks like a master of flows back here for a muffalator. I also noticed that she must have had brand and new shocks right before I was parked up in the rear, maybe even coil springs, fighting them tire issues. You know, but this isn't rotted out. Don't even want to talk about the fuel tank yet. We'll get to that a little bit later. But almost got these rears off. I think I could have got a little bit more out of these. That one doesn't have wires coming out yet. It's just chunking. That one's down. Nope. Still could have got 100 miles out of it. You know, if a feller thinks about it, there is a lining full of silver and high trans to drag in this rig around yesterday, if you think about it. Not only did we get the engine rotating, but we know all four tires aren't stuck, which is great. That would have been a fight. There's the brake pedal. It's, I mean, I don't think it's working per se, but it doesn't sink to the floor and it's firm, but it doesn't really seem to move. But that means it's holding brake pressure somewhere. So maybe we'll have brakes. I don't know. But most importantly, Gooderist is the clutch which is hydrodraulics on this unit. There's, you know, fluids is what runs the thing down on the shift machine. That worked, which is, oh, I can't even tell you what kind of a nightmare that would have been. Fought those many a times. Bleeding them is not fun. Yeah, he's been there, that guy. Bleeding them is not fun. Any who and house and way, we got the wheels and tires loaded up. Let's run the town, get those swapped. We'll be back, get those put on, get her back on the ground. Then we could probably throw a battery in this thing, see if the key does something, get this whirling around again, see what that sounds like. Just dropped those tires off. They said they'd have them ready in about 30 minutes or so. Gonna go get a couple frames in down at the bowling alley, you know, dust off the old ristuses here. Nope, but I definitely will have their baked spaghetti with jalapenos. <laughs> yep. Well, the new to me old rotten tires are Zeus on. These guys were really good. There's a part here they were concerned about. They marked it for me to keep an eye on it. It's got a split and it doesn't look bad here, but when they were stretching it on, he showed me a picture. It was pretty big. And then we looked up the date code on this. They're from 1996. That's pretty much brand new, you know? If we can get 600 miles out of them, I'll be happy. Okay. You know, when I flew into Columbus, I put it on the media full of socials. I needed some help finding these oddball tires, and a feller named Rich got a hold of me and said he could hook me up. He went around and picked these up for me, so a big thank you to him. Yep. Someone really just rebuilt on this on the inside here all over frame everything and by rebuilt I mean so that's completely approved by the way we got some Goodyear Eagle Legitus the second better than the first and then we got some Goodyear Eagles Rambo Hovercraft on the front I don't know, I don't know which one's better. They're pretty identical. I think these are rated like Mach 3. These are rated to like 400 miles an hour. Just enough, just enough to get us through. I got one more up here on the captain's side front. Now we can try to get this spinning over with the key. What do we got? Oh, 
Never start. That ain't gonna work. Get out of here! I got this the thing. Very specific reason why I chose this one here. Yeah. Is uh well, it's gotta go hand. It's also on sale currently, so that was nice. Mm-hmm. Haps. Do we got the right side to the right things? Yeah, we do. And it actually fits better. Okay. Time for a fire test. Rigs sit up for a while, fellers. And fellettes. Mice can chew the liars and rodents get in there and root around and they do the things and the water leaks and the erosion and corrosions. Biometallic corrosions. And hey, there's things that happen with vehicles when they sit. That's what I'm saying. You got to do a fire test. Well, that's what I call it anyway. I'm going to drop the positive on. I already got the sad cable rigged up. And we're going to listen smell and hear for fire okay hear that cooling fan works it's running like oj simpson i ain't kidding you well that's good well wait let's test that switch under the dash sure enough <laughs> you know third gen life when the temperature switch fails maybe the relay just wire in a house switch inside for the cooling fan we know that works how's everything else going we got any melty wires anything smell hot feel hot no So it passed the test. Everything, everything seems fine electrodigitally so far. That's good. Just got to finish installing this. Installed. Look out, Jack. Ooh, you can jack the car up with the door. Ignore that grinding, that's just the bushings. <clears throat> oh yeah, six foot nine in a compact, but luckily the seats go back. That was a, this was a mic drop. seat doesn't go back that's fine okay neutralis horse fly we got a fasten belt sign let's see if it cranks over with the ignition stick it does not I got gauges of all sorts security service engine What is all this beeping? Okay, what in the devil? How could there be Securitai? Oh, for crying in the mud. Fan still kicks on. Got sniggerettes everywhere. Radio lights up. E-brake lifts. I mean, we got everything you would ever want. It just won't turn over. I got blinkers. I got another blinker. I got... <laughs> Fan works. Is that a horse? I don't know. Well, this is going to be interesting. wonder if there's a safety switch on the clutch here. Great. 
Well, the brand new electrotronic meter I bought from Hobo Freight. Yeah, it's junk. Great. Okay, the other great news is I got the Lone Wolf 6000 hooked in there. You know? The not so great news. So it's, we're just, we're doing really good. What do we, what do we have done here? We uh, put tires on it. Okay. Everything seems, seems fine. I'm going to crawl underneath and take my hammer. This way it's a vice grip. This way it's a hammer. Tickle on the starter. See if that'll do something. Probably not. Yeah, it's got a heat wrap on it, so you know this has been an issue. Here we go. That's, that's fine. Well, the guy tickled on the crank with the old crankulator tickler and then hit the button and it did a thing. Watch. I also hear spark somewhere. Were you even paying attention? When we're doing this, you need, you gotta be, you're here. Like, listen, you know, I heard spark in here. Where is it at? See, it's doing it again. But if I just tickle this over, tickle, then do it. No, nope. tickle it a little more. Why is that battery so down already? We got some lips on somewhere. I got to save on that. In fact, I'm going to unplug it because that's not, that's barely going to turn over when we get all the spark plugs back in. Okay, we better, well, I don't have a meter that hit the ground, fell out of my hand. So we're going to have to just do it the old school way. Put the spark lighters back in, hook everything up, add some fire, make it happener. If it's got spark, it's gonna fire. I ain't got no tools. You know what I mean? Okay, here we go. Truth be went ahead and told. I was planning on putting new lighting hoses on this thing. In fact, I bought them. But I'm so far behind schedule right now, I think I'm gonna have to rent my truck for another day. I don't even want to, that's the farthest we're going to go with that conversation. So I think I'm going to try to save on some money here and just run these lighting hoses. I don't see any mouse chews or anything like that. Tricky part is there, the lightning, it can escape. It'll do weird things. The guy doesn't really know. I mean, you could even ohm them out and they might seem okay, but sometimes they're not. What I'm going to do is just carry the new ones with me and whilst on the road trip, we'll diagnose the CC, the hoses. If we need to use them, great. If not, halfway home, I'm going to turn them back in. Plus, it'll save a little bit of time here. Because that's about where we're at. It's just how quickly now at this juncture can we just, we got to get this thing fired up at this point. We're losing the daylight. It's going down. Where did it even go? See what I mean? It's gone. Well, here's where we're at. Battery that's already 35% drained. That's neat. You know, no jumper cables or jump box or battery charger or anything like that. 
got all the sparkulators back in. We had a board meeting. You were there. Don't act like you weren't. And we discussed that. Let's leave these lighting hoses in. Save a few minutes. Right now, I am disconnecting the fuel line from the tank, which used to be a high pressure line. And I see it has been adapt or ruined and flip flapped and all sorts of stuff into this low pressure line that's super crispy. I don't know what's in the tank yet. And I don't want to gamble on it. So we're going to disconnect it before we start cranking. Oh, we got some fuelage coming out. It's butterscotchy colored. Oh. <laughs> really bad gas. Not quite varnished yet. But I mean, well, whatever. It's probably ish flammable. Okay, that's disc code. We're gonna assume, because my meter's good, that we got power to the coil, the coil's good, we pretendly tested that. All the lightning hoses are good, sparkulators are in. Okay, so, I think we just dumped some fire maker straight down the app on this thing. Twirl it over with the starter, that barely works. And see if we can hear it run for just a couple minutes. And then I can decide, what am I doing here in northern, what is this, Ohio? Yeah, Ohio. <sighs> Got to come up with a plan quick because we're running out of times. Okay, be right back. Guys got some true, tr true fuel. No E because it's that cool, apparently. Anyway, it's 50 to 1 mixed, pre-mixed expensive but it's already I mean it's done it's what I need I like to run a little bit of two-stroke oil in my fuel mixture fillers I'm gonna fill the bowl here going right through the vent that way if it does fire can it just sit and idle for a minute I really really want to hear this thing run without knocks or bangs or anything like that then we know it's worth time to go ahead and change the oil and you know, we got a lot of farting around to do. That's what I've been trying to tell you. All right, down the app. Way, way too much. Considerably flooded. That's fine. Roll the ignition stick on. We're gonna go hot. Okay. Does that even go forward? It does. Okay. All right. Here's the moment that six of you have been waiting for. Did you put it in neutral? Okay, good. Okay, we should have sparkles, hopefully. I don't know. We're gonna have fire maker. Here we go. Bring the thunders. Bring it again. One more time. Okay. All right. All right. I see how it's. I see what's happening. Let me just ease this over. Well, for crying in the mud, can you go on the crank bolt? Ouch! That's blood. Here we go. Didn't like the spot. Doesn't like it there. Okay. Keep going. How about here? Come on now. Might need a starter. Okay, here we go. Let's do this again. You know, if it didn't have headers in it, I would be slightly inclined to go ahead and just replace that, but boy, that's a 17 hour fight. I ain't kidding you. Well, what do you want? How do you want it? I just never seen such Mickey Mouse stuff in my life, but here I am. Oh, for heaven's sake. It might be dead dead. We might have got all the starterage. We're gonna get out of that starter. Let me wrap on it one more time. This concrete feels like what I would imagine Swiss cheese feels like if in it were concrete. Smooth on back. Okay, here we go. 
Well, for heaven's sake. Well, I can hear a lot of compression and the fuel that I dumped in. I just don't understand how this could be a thing. Okay, here's the thing. I think the starter might be bad. You know, I just, I have this sixth sense, some people call it. Why is that so hot? We got an electro-digital issue. <sighs> Great. Ignore that for now. Pretend it didn't happen. Anywho, I hooked up scanning tools, and it said the starter is probably bad. You know? And the good news is it's like 7.30, Sun's about to go down. I'm looking right at it. Part store. I don't know. That's 35 minutes that way. We are way up north, fellers. North of Nevada. They don't call it Nevada. Nevada. All right. So here's the plan. Got to swing into a part store. Hopefully they have a starter for this, which isn't going to be the right model of year. So I'm going to tell them it's a 1974 Monte Collar with a 354 barrel. Try to get a starter. Gonna have to take this whole header off, remove the exhaust, probably lift the engine up out of the motor mount. Do I have those tools? I don't think so. Gotta pick up some lights, starter, electrical, digital connection fittings, some zip ties, digital tape, and we're gonna struggle like the struggle bus. We gotta get the starter in. I mean, I, we just, we have, we need it, you know, to, ru to run the vehicle. All right, going to town again. You know, I might swing by Bucks, wet the back neck, get some macaroni salad. 37 months later, drove to town, got a starter, but I got a story for you. I wonder what the Kentucky Headhunters are doing. Really could go for a small burger fries and a bottle of ski right now. Especially if they brought it out to my baby and me. Got the starter back here. Wallet underneath of her. Uh-oh. I've got an offset starter for a manual transmission. This one, the bolts are straight across. You know what that means? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This ain't a 350. This is, in fact, a 305. Someone Craigslist rebuilt it. Told somebody it was a 350. You know, sure ain't. I'm telling you right now, I don't even got to look at the casting. So I got the wrong starter. Well, I pulled the other one out anyway. I was going to take her apart, fix on it on the old bench. Also known as the pick em up truck. Because the Bendex ain't Bendexing. Then I found 58 million pounds of this jammed in there. This is where the mice was moving all the stuff. So I don't think the Bendex could throw. It wasn't throwing that gear out. You hear my elbow? That ain't good. Anyway, let's try it now. Let's see if it turns it over. I don't have the key on. I just want to test the starter. This, maybe that was a fluke. We're in business. We are in business. I ain't made a dollar yet. So go ahead and put the open sign on. Okay, let me roll the key forward. Let's do it again. We know we filled the bowl with fire maker. Hopefully, this thing pops off. And finally, make some noise. Going hot. Yeah, it's still just me. All right, bring the thunders. Holy smokehouse, that was now. It's smoking like crazy, but that's that marble mystery oil. No one knows what's in it, it's a mystery. It's running, yes. That thing fired up instantaneously. It's just running on the fuel on the carb right now. burning off all that stuff. 
Oh, what a relief. It sounds great. This engine was just locked up, solid. Listen to it. There ain't a valve train click, knock, bang, nothing. Wonder if I just keep filling the ball here. Flooded it. Wow. This must have come out of the muffler. That's that Marvel Mist Royal. If you had the smell of vision oh yeah, it's right there. But that's okay. We want to lubricate on the cylinders and rings. That'll burn off with a little bit of time. Gonna need some sort of heat wrap on these wires before we leave. I gotta be honest with you, I'd, I'd never lie to you, ever, even if there was a fire. This one had the blood pressures pegged on the meter of pounds or mercury or whatever they measure that in. And the doctor said, you gotta stop working on cars. And she also said, you know, cold snacks and steak every night doing bad things to the bloods. Well, I ain't done with neither. In fact, I'll take my flat and Meganon right in the car. <sighs> anyway, pulse is coming down from 220. It's running. It's not banging and knocking. Tons of smoke, but again, that's we're fine with that. We dumped a bunch of stuff in here. Whole can of whatever that blitz stuff was. Mystery oil. No one knows it's in that, the mystery, and everything else. So the snake belt staying on, it's actually in really good shape, but it's squealing like crazy. I think we've got an accelerator pump. I didn't really rev on it yet. I just gave her a couple blips and it blipped, you know. None of the gauges work. So the fan is going to be kind of interesting. We're just going to have to gauge on that when we think it's going to get warm. I don't even think I've looked in here yet. That's bone dry. Seems fine. No idea if it's charging. I dropped my meter earlier. If you remember. So that's great. I guess we'll just keep starting it and shutting it off 36 times. 37 if you want to be safe. See if it's charging. Okay. Now that we know it runs, let's go ahead and drop the earl out of this. Put a new fill tray in, get that done. We can run it longer, get some water in this, see if the head gaskets come around. We got to prepare this for a road trip. I got to go through Columbus. That ain't easy. Cincinnati, seriously? Oh. Kentucky and Nashville in this rig. We haven't even got to brakes and lights and I gotta leave tomorrow, right? Everything's fine. Oil oh, looked good. I mean, still had a little bit of dinosaur in it, a little bit of viscosity. Some people get so darn ornery and say, How could you start an engine on old engine oil? You're ruining it. Nope. Viscosity just doesn't disappear because the oil is sitting. That really never disappears unless it's from excessive use, abuse, temperature, and wear. And in this case, it was fine to run on, and you want to warm up your own old oil so that all the sludge and impurities and stuff work their way down into the pan, mix up a little bit, and get out. Otherwise, if you just drop it, throw fresh oil in, you're still going to have 23.72654391.7% batter oil in your new gooder oil. So this worked out good. Going to let that finish, and then... We got to get this fram out of here before anything else happens. And I ain't kidding you. Floor still looks good. We're going to continue to ignore that. Oh, I fixed it.
plopped in the new fill tray already. Of course, I had to throw a wick in her. What is this? Reduces friction. Quiets the noisy lifters and valves. Maximizes power. Yeah, I need that. Especially now that we know we have a 305. Okay, that's good. The rest of this went into the filter tray already. Yep. What have we got for Earl this time? Where did it go? There it is. Heavy duty diesel oil. It's got all the zinc the guy needs for these older engines. And it's cheap. I ain't kidding you. Is this fun now going to stay like that? How am I getting this to stay like that? I don't know. Looking forward to seeing if we get the thermostat to open. See if the digital fan keeps it cool. I mean, we got... Seems like we're on the other side of the fence rooting around some green grass fellers, but we ain't there yet. We ain't even close. Wonder what the rear end's going to do. How the transmission sounds. Oof, stop. We got a long list. No, we got the Earls in it. Let's go ahead and fire it up again. Let it run on some fresh Earl. We'll bring her up to temp. See if we can get the thermostat to open. And cross our fingers that the head gaskets, you know, they haven't left the building yet. Boy, it starts right now. I do like that. Valve train sounds really good. Definitely know that wasn't the issue when it was stuck. Got to add more fuel. I don't know if I'm quite ready to gamble on the fuel tank in the rear. We got the fan on. Thermostat just open. Circulizing. That's good. Now we can let it run for a little bit. Sounds pretty darn good. Still smoky, but it's burning off. Take a little bit of time. Let's see. Temp's way down. I don't think it's charging. It says like nine volts. I'm gonna turn the fan off. Let it warm up again, make sure that thermostat is doing the thermostat -y things. Well, we're gonna have to take a gamble here on the fuel capacitize because I need it for going 600 miles. Just looped in a fill tray here, and what I went with this time is an Edel broken. You could twist these apart, and there's just a brass thimble cup in here basically. You can clean it out, put it back together, and run. So if we are pulling a bunch of junk from the tank, I put a loop in here into the factory holder upper downer unit over here. We could just simply crack this loose, clean it out, screw it back together, and just keep hitting the road. I got five gallons of fresh gas. I know, really going crazy here, over budget. Gonna dump that in, this bad boy, and see if that mechanical fuel pump is working. Hopefully, and hopefully this tank isn't all rusted out and full of dirt and straw and hay and everything else. Well, for heaven's sake. There we go. You know what they say, eight in the hole is better than two in the dice. You know, if a guy wants to feel really old, go ahead and revive a car that you took to high school. That'll do it. Quick, fast, dirty, in a hurry. Well, threw some gas in it, and you're not gonna believe this, but I think the fuel gauge works. Yep, she 
hooked up dump tube on the quarter tank. So I'm going to let it sit here and just purr, eat on that for a while. And hopefully it's pulling from the tank and doing that thing. That's the downside to not having the 33003 Wix fill field tray. Guy can't see what's going on. By now I would have quit though. Oh yeah, you squeeze the fuel line here with your fingers. You can feel it just like a pulse. Every time that rod comes around and kicks the cam and the fuel pump, 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 pump. We got a good, good pulse on the fuel pump. She's pumping. Oh yeah, I gotta flip the house switch on. Can't let her overheat. <laughs> just rolled my ankle all the way. It's got like 45, 46 foot pounds. Oil pressures at idle. That's fantastic. Slight miss just every now and then, but look at all the oil and stuff that's chewing through. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her the old Vitalion tuna. You know, can we feed her the onions, shovel some coal in this thing, blow the cobwebs out, put the foot through the firewall, pin its ears back, you know what I mean? And we'll throw some feet 12 right down the app. I'm gonna leave you back here so you can watch the show and you know, listen to the pipe lighters, of course. the snot out of the nostrils there she started charging gauge popped up probably just had to get excited you know what I mean there's a wire on there the old excite wire sometimes rpm dependent seems to be charging I actually heard it kind of start dragging and the rpm kind of dip so I know that's working now which is fantastic let's do a light check boop oh yeah we got a rear, we got another rear. Look at all this crud just blowing out. That's all the oil and miscellaneous mixtures I dumped in her. Here we got running lights, side marker, we got a headlamp, and another one. We got lights, get out of here. Well, I mean, you come back, but okay. That's really good. Okay. Doing good. Ten years sitting in a barn. Running. We're not quite there yet. Haven't gotten to the transmission, rear end, brakes, but that's all, you know, stuff for a later, later time. We're not worried about it right now. Here's what I think I'm going to do, though, is I have to return my rental first thing in the morning, right away, right? I don't want to get charged an extra day. Let's take that starter back. That's like a tank and a half of fuel right there. I'm going to take the old battery back. That's another 18 bucks. I got some trash to throw away. I got to get the fixings to cover up these wires. I got to get some Windex or Rain-X or something, clean up this windscreen. Then we'll come back. And even if it's, you know, dark, I can start packing a little bit, figuring out how all this is going to fit in there. And then that'll put us in a position, hopefully, tomorrow morning, guy can just ease in here from an Uber Assist or a Taxis or one of them Life apps, whatever they are. It's about an hour and a half ride back from dropping the vehicle off. We just look things over and then just full send. Put it on the highway. As long as it goes forward. You know what I mean? 
So I'm gonna go do that quick. We're getting there. This is gonna be something else. 600 miles, why did I do that? Filled up the brake juice here. Of course that was low and looked like chocolate pudding. So we're gonna just ignore on that for now. And I got some sleeving here. We can cover these wires up. This stuff's great when you have existing wiring because you could blow it and open, wrap it up, fold her up like a diaper and you're done. Almost got this configured in here. Picked up a new Lorena Bobbit from the parts store. She's sharp. I ain't kidding. Cut right through this stuff. The ignition key ain't starting the rig. Must be a safety switch or something on the, ouch. On the clutch there, that ain't working, you know? So I'm gonna ignore that as well. Security, anti-thefts, 3,000. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm just gonna leave the lone wolf laying in here. I don't think the hood closes all the way either, so easy access. ba ba ba, -ba! You know, right up here. We'll deal with that some other day. Nope, I'll forget and just push it in the trees. But what I'm saying is we got a way to start it and everything, everything's going good. I'm gonna keep loading tools into the back here, everything that I need to get in here and uh, get my trash together. And we might be in pretty good shape for tomorrow. Great news, after I turned everything back in, all the parts and stuff I didn't use, picked up this DEI sleeving, brake juice, Windex, towels, couple other things still got $41.80 back <laughs> I'll be tipped might pull a stool up at the tavern and chew on a well done cheeseburger hmm. sounds pretty good nope do need cold snacks though well let's all go down to Dumas Walker something really satisfying about wiping off a decade of back, Wano. No, it's not fun at all. But I wonder if we can get it to where a guy can see what in the devil is going on out of this. You know, that's it. That's what I'm doing right now. That's my goal. There we go. Gonna have to do the insider too. Get some sun in here. Tan up the earlobes, sure. Well, test drive or no test drive, we're just gonna have to, you know, put her on the highway tomorrow and see what happens. So quite honestly, I'm not even gonna worry about it tonight. I got everything loaded but my luggage. Sun's going down right now. I'm gonna go try to catch up on some V's for about, or is it Z's? W's. For, I don't know, four hours, five hours. Up bright and early, get my rental back, get back here and then we're just gonna jam this thing on the interstate. We got a lot of miles to make up. Let's see what happens. It's probably gonna be fine. No, I don't have a very good feeling about this one. Plates from, does that say 88? Why would that say 88 if the car's an 89? It's not the right plate, I don't think. That should work. See you in the morning. Good morning, start of day three, travel day. We're gonna call this. Got to shoot over and drop this truck off. It's about an hour drive. Grab that Ubers or the Lifes and get back to the Camara. And then we're just going to jump in and, you know, we got to get moving. Time's uh, against taking away us, against us. Hunt's Pizza. Maybe I should go to breakfast pizza. Well, she's still here. And... All the tires are up. That's great news. Mm. The smell has not improved. Even with the windows open and the doors and the hatch. For two days. This is the one. This is where I get hantavirus. This is the one. I've never done this before, I don't think, on a revival, but we're going to have to try to vacuum this out or something. I mean, my eyes are burnt. I can feel it entering my body, is what I'm saying. Got four gallons in here. I guess our test drive, if you will, is going to be to the gas station, which is 11 miles. That'll be our shakedown. Can we make the other 590? 
after that. I don't know. Let's find out. Give her a little choke. Do a cold start today. Oh yeah, the key doesn't work in here, right? Nope. Wonder why that is. Well, I guess I'll go out and hit the lone wolf hanging out of the front there. Oh yeah, that's busted too. sleep I lost last night if I would have had to start tearing into brakes I would have been late getting Just blasted my way to the fuel station here. Got the hose in there, letting her drink up. Hurts the wallet, but I am gonna run 93, at least for the first tank or two, with a can of berm in there as well. Hey, listen, first time in a long time. I just ran 70, 75, whole way here. Didn't get hot. Started getting a little warm, but didn't get hot. Did have to turn the fan on, but that's completely normal we might actually be able to make good time, which is unusual for me. Normally it's like 50, 45 or less. So this is gonna be great. Definitely has aftermarket rear springs, extremely stiff. Kind of noticed that yesterday. And that explains why he was able to get these tires in here without them rubbing. Cause I had that issue quite a bit. Left front, something doesn't sound, it's kind of, I don't even want to say it, you know what it's, it could be an, an inside or an outside one, but we're not gonna say it yet. We're just gonna wait. We're gonna finish fueling up. The speedometer is easily 20 miles per hour off. So I'm gonna have to use a digital gyps pocket computer machine to calculate the old MPGs on it. But I bet we'll do pretty good with the five sped. Hopefully anyway, fuel is a little pricey these days. There's a car wash right down the road no, we ain't got time to wash it. But according to the satellite gyps pocket box, they have a vacuum canister out front. We'll go vacuum this up quick. Just close the hatch on my gas station glasses. I go through a pair a week. Well, I guess we'll go get some more. Slim pickings. 
Well, I'll be dead. We got three vacuums. Well, I didn't do nothing. I take that back. What it did do was make it worse. It just mixed everything up and aerated it, basically. I'm running a bunch of bourbon flavors. I just keep switching them out when they get dull, you know. Also, the reason the smell was so just right, right in your front teeth is, well, I found a mouse carcass in the defrost vent, and it was just bone. So all that, you know, decomposed juices and whatnot just dripping through the dash right up here. So that's fine. Anyway, engine was locked up, sitting in a barn, old Camaro. Nothing left to do but just stick this on the highway, see how far we can get. Pulled over, take a little break. Car got a little bit warm there, following the river through traffic. It says 220 on the gauge. Now on the dash, that's normal. It doesn't show hot till 240, but you know, small block Chevy, uh, over 190. Yeah. The fan is still working, so that's not an issue. I think we just got to get some wind in it. But you know, the little strip mall here. I think we go get my ears lowered. Actually, this is getting a little out of control. And then uh, I might go grab some red meat, wet back neck down just a little bit. By then the car will be cool and hit the road again. We're almost to the interstate and I think we'll be just fine. Fish tacos. That's what I had for lunch. Jessica's going to be mad. She really got in there with the skizzers. Camaro's cooled down. We're, I think, nine miles from the interstate. And then we're headed right into Columbus. We got Cincinnati after that. Ooh, and then Nashville. We're probably going to be coming through Nashville at dark. Just, you know, fingers crossed that nothing happens. So far, everything's just fine, though. spread from here to there so I guess that's 240 so we're maybe 228.6 uh, I don't know might just have to slow down right now I'm trying to blast at like 75 which with the five speed really isn't turning it much but it is really really hot out and the way they made these third gens they're really great land speed cars because they're so low to the ground and they don't scoop a lot of air in the front. 
if you look at them, there really is no like wide open traditional front or grill or anything like that. They rely on a little lip and that little vent on the bottom to scoop air into the rad and we're just not really scooping, I guess. I might go in here and grab a couple gallons of water to cool it down enough to where I could pop the cap open and um, see if we're using any water or losing any water and make sure we could check that off the list and then double check the fan as well. Which, uh, yep, I can hear it running. So we're fine there. I don't know where I'm at. Uh, I only use a quarter tank of fuel. I probably won't fuel yet. But we're slowly making our way. Well, it was plum full. Definitely ain't chewing on the waters. Uh, I did go ahead and just sprinkle some in here a little bit, cooled her down. Don't take ice cold water and splash it on an engine, fellers. Karach! You'll make some Zeus's real quick. This is uh, was lukewarm laying on the floor in there. Run it down the intake valleys, kind of just let her set in. Not overly concerning just yet. Unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do on this. I can maybe, can a guy get this out of here somehow? How is this attached? That's blocking up some wind. You know, all of this really is. That's pretty much all the air it gets. Can't really take the hood off on this unit because we got all the glass up here. Could I maybe put the tops back here somehow? And lay them in where they're not going to get broken because that would be my luck. And then put the hood on. I don't, I don't know. We're still 400 and then some miles. And we're already into this. Great. The good news is the battery's holding voltages and the brakes work. So, I mean, everything is, everything's fine. So a guy did go on ahead and decide... You know, let's get this old plate holder out of here. You only need one in Tennessee. Because it is literally... I can't do the math magicianals. But it's like a third of the airflow is blocked. It ain't going through here. Right? So let's get this out of the way. Maybe that'll help. Just a scooch. I think everything's doing what it should be doing. We're just not getting enough wind through the fins there. You know? Well, I didn't do us any good. There's a mount right back here for that anyway. But it looks better, you know. I can smell this car outside in front of it. I just, I don't understand it at this point. Well, let's jam it back on the interstate. Got about two and a half, three hours. Should start cooling down. And then obviously this evening it'll be a lot cooler. I think we're going to make it. I'm just going to bring her down about 1.72 miles an hour. That should help. Nope. Definitely not. This fuel gauge has got to be inaccurate. I had to have used more fuel than what it's showing by now. I'm going to go about another 40 miles and then we'll do the math additionals. See where we're at. Let's see. So anyway, about to get fuel for the second time and it's still getting still getting hot. Now keep in mind, I don't know how accurate this temp gauge is. It's saying 220, but it ain't boiling. It ain't bubbling, it ain't overflowing. So I don't know, okay? We're just erring on the side of caution. I sure don't want to do a head gasket swap. I know, right? So here's what I'm gonna do, I think. Now keep in mind this doesn't always work, fellers. But I'm going to take the thermostat out. If there even is one in there, I guess. I don't know yet. But sometimes it fights against it because the whole point of the radiator is your juices come through here and flow through these cores and fins and whatnot and it dissipates the heat, right? But sometimes you take the thermostat out, it flows through too quick. It doesn't dissipate enough and you just start circulating hotter and hotter and hotter liquids and it actually fights against you. I don't know what's in there. I know I also don't have a gasket, but 
we got a hardware store. So if I got to get some room temperature vulcanization cream, I could probably find that. So let's pop this out and see what we got going on. Well, what is it? What do we have? What do we got? No thermostat. So we might have to do the reversers. See, she might be flow lighting too quickly. Now I got to find a Hardmore store. Not this flavor, the car flavor. Bunch of hay in here. There's a whole lot more. She's just packed up. But it's above the ducts. There's some air chutes in there. So I'm not going to dig it out and make a mess in the parking lot. Come on now. Oh. Usually get it on the first try. Hips up. You stubborn little. There we go. Anyone else notice how bad these screens are getting you want to get gas you pull the handle out it says hey you want a hot dog no is this a debit card yep before you enter that number are you sure you don't want a rewards card uh-uh credit card no i'll taller you come on put in your zip code got it you sure you don't want a hot dog no you want a receipt uh-uh enter your pin did that then it's like well now you can select your thing well Pete's sake. Let me figure out what kind of mileages we're getting. We've filled twice now, so. Well, I ran the math twice. That's telling me 19.78. What? I mean, if that's the case, I'll take it. I'd rather wheel this around every day. Sips on fuel if you keep the four barras out of them. Just use the front barras. I don't know. We'll run it again. I'm going to drop a pin. Boop on this station here, we'll wheel to the next one and run it that way again. Because again, the speedometer is way off, but I've learned where the ripples are in fifth gear, according to the gyps machine, to run about 70, 75. Anywho, I gotta figure out how to find a parts for, does that say Casa? They probably have tacos. I took this out quick. Oh, a feller did snag them up a 160 degree eatle broken thermostat some water wetter and a slip joint plier with the nice handle. Tell you what fellers, when things are out of whack and they might collapse and at the end of the day you still can't relax and physically you ache like a cavity feeling the bind on your mind and the rest of your body, just know it's gonna be okay. All right, we'll get through this piece of cake. So like a guy was saying earlier, before I even knew there wasn't one in there, sometimes you run them uncorked like this, when you're just dumping hot water in and it's sucking it right back out, just foom, foom. It ain't letting the fan do anything. This electric fan's not gonna dissipate heat. Hopefully, this is gonna be the key here. It's 160, so it's gonna open quick, but it's gonna slow it down. It's gonna neck it, can we bring the flow down? Let's neck it down a little bit, okay? And let this digital fan do its thing. The other thing I'm gonna do is run water water. This is what the old dirt track guys run, is just water and water water, and run up to 20 degrees cooler, and this stuff actually works, and it doesn't have any glycol in it. So you can run that down the drag strip, or the asphalt track, or whatever track, and they allow it because it doesn't have that slimy, greasy glycol in it. Uh, just remember, a lot of people just dump one of these in and go, oh, it doesn't work. Well, it's, if you read the constructions somewhere on here anyway oh here it is three to four capfuls per quart you got to read the mixture here most systems is going to take a lot more than just one bottle to be effective so let's see if this was actually hot had a little pressure oh yeah Moses sandals she's a bird in it so before I throw it in this thermostat I'm uh, recycling the recycling, the antifreeze, and give it to the parts store. And then uh, we'll be able to fill it up with water, see, and put the water wetter in there. Get this thing cooled down so we can actually have a fair try here, or attempt, I guess, to see if this is going to cool it down or not. I'm pretty confident, like 17.32%, you know? It is a beautiful day, though. Look at this, can you see that? 
it's nice. It's really nice. Boop. No leaks there. Running it with the fan off. So the thermostat opened up for us. Just burping all the air out here. Still some roady looking stuff coming out. I'm sure that's what was in the block. Keep flushing it with some water. Top her off with the wetter. We'll go put it on the highway and see what it does. All finished, doing good so far. It's gonna suck a little bit back from the overfill tank. I didn't go that nuts with the cycling. You know what I mean? All right, here we go. Well, you know, it was right next door. One cannot simply pass street tacos. I had tacos for lunch, but to be fair, that was fish, basically. Now I'm getting some carne asada tacos. The real deal, it is actually definitely about supper time. We're running way behind, but remember, we got head lips and tail lips, so. Hopefully I can get filled up here. I got a full tank of fuel. Hopefully the cooling issue and heating issue, I guess you would call it, is taken care of. And we just keep on rocking. That fuel mileage is accurate. We can put down a good 300 miles here before we got to stop. down been able to stare at that out the drinker side window well top I guess it's been a nice drive last fuel stop we should be able to make it for a couple hundred miles away since I got the heating up issue resolved guy just kept shoveling the coal to her and we went right through rural Kentucky all the way down I don't know we're on the bottom ender side of Kentucky is what I'm saying ran into two Unfortunately, two horrible accidents. And first time was like 35 minutes. Second time, I used Waze as a GPS systems. I don't know. Anyway, it thankfully routed me around, went through some backcountry stuff, saved a bunch of time there. But the first time I got stopped, we we're going so slow, I was able to actually just take the tops off whilst in the rig. One I just slid in the passenger seat, and the other one I just slid up on the luggage. And well, you know what? Should have done that. You know, this morning, hindsight being 1310. Is that an old farm mall? Anyway, I'm gonna calculate on the MPGs here in a minute. And we'll see if we're really getting 19 miles to the gallon. I know it's gonna go down, has to, because I mean, I was, I was in her, you know what I mean? Allegedly. Yep, jury's in. Got 14.9 that time, which makes, you know, that makes sense. Plus, we did a lot of idling, like a lot, sitting in traffic and whatnot. But this confirms I might have to doll this thing up, put some lipstick on her, you know, maybe some new high heels. I don't know if I like these wheels or not. What do you guys think about these things? Should we keep them around or do something different? Definitely fits the eras but I don't know anymore. I'm gonna check on the Earls, see if we're chewing on any, but there's no leaks, no splatters, no drips. This engine was locked up yesterday. I, I don't understand what's happening. Well, it could probably take about three quarters of a quart. No, I'm gonna call it 12 sixteenths, something like that. Ice is only a buck. Anyway, I'm going to go in here and get a $17 quart of oil, <laughs> and then uh, we'll hit the road. This should be our last blast. We're in the home stretch. Listen. Door buzzer just started working. I'll be dipped.
I made it home. First thing a guy I did was wet the back neck, grab a quick shower, and I've been unpacking a little bit. Officially 594 miles, and it took me 11 hours and 17 minutes with all the stops and issues and everything else. But I tell you what, for a Camaro that sat in a barn for nearly a decade, this engine was literally stuck at 7.30 p.m. the night before I left, seized up, drove home just fine. Only used less than one quart of oil, and the more I'm driving this thing, the absolute better it's running. I think it's a legit go on the town rig. I cut my mullet off, and it's already a quarter inch longer. Explain that to me. Wish I would have had some compact discs. We'd have the Motley Crue and Def Leppards or Cheetahs or whatever, whatever that one was. No, probably definitely Whalen, but you know what I mean. Now, always the hard part and where I need your help, what do we do with this thing? Tires, wheels, leave it, wash it, buff it, paint it, just drive it? I don't know, but I tell you what, with the fuel mileage, you will absolutely see me driving this car around as a daily driver. This and my blue shop truck are kind of my go-tos, I think, right now. But that's gonna do it, another successful revival. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting and absolutely for subscribing. I really appreciate you guys. We'll see you very soon. How's the mouse smell doing? Nope, can already smell it. It's terrible. Let's let it air out a little bit.